Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. It is December already. I am very cozy today because I want to do a really really nice cozy jacket, tailored jacket that is. Though I'm gonna do two parts for this jacket because I really want to, you know, be super detailed. I also want to show you the fitting process, everything about that. And then I have a special thing that I want to add to this design, which is a collar or a lapel collar that you can take off and which also acts as a belt. Now this probably sounds ridiculous, but I'm going to show you how I am doing that and what I mean by that. I already have my mock-up. That is the first mock-up that I did. I did the pattern yesterday and I just sewed the mock-up and we're going to do the fitting together. So let's get started. Okay, as I mentioned, I already did the mock-up right here. I used some soft shell again, but I turned the, you know, soft side towards the outside, which is usually on the inside. And then on the inside, you have this kind of lining-esque side, which is, you know, slippery. Not that it does anything, but I just wanted to have a material or a side showing that will be similar to the material that I'll end up using. And I want to do this out of a coat -y material, like something that you would use for coats, or alternatively out of a really, really nice brown wool or woolen type of fabric. I'm not sure yet, I have to go fabric shopping or once, you know, my mock-up is done, I have this really, really nice green boucle right here which I think will look also really, really pretty for this jacket, but this is like very thick. This is a very thick coat material, so I'm not sure whether I can even use this, but this is an option that I am eyeing, and if I can't use it because it is too thick, I'll go out and buy some sort of wool, similar to the one that I used for last week's episode, you know, the, the skirt that I made, and also this is, in the bigger picture, going to be an outfit, the skirt with this jacket, so you can use these two to do a combo. That is also why we have this kind of, you know, wider hip area down here so that the skirt kind of has room to puff out and it works together very well. That was my thought process behind that. And then also I want to have something that is warm and cozy and also super elegant so that I, you know, have that in my closet as well and you do too. So let's actually get started with the fitting process. This is, by the way, the back it has this cute little fold right here, this box pleat. One thing, I added a shoulder pad, a super, super low profile shoulder pad. I think it is only like a few millimeters, maybe five, into this shoulder where also the arm of my dress form is in, just to see how it looks with and without the shoulder pad. And I'm eyeing towards the side with the shoulder pad. I'm gonna put it on myself as well once I'm done with the fitting to see if it works better that way. But just as a heads up, I have a shoulder pad in here and I'll be fitting this piece with the shoulder pad inserted. My plan for this piece is a zipper here in the front because it is the least bulky method to close something. You could technically do, you know, buttons or whatnot, but then you'll overlap it and you'll have probably like four layers of fabric. And if I want to add the lapel collar, it's gonna be a lot in the front, so I'd rather have a hidden zipper right here in the front, which is very low profile and is easy to, you know, get in and out of. And then the collar is kind of hiding it anyways. And also like these folds that I added here are also hiding the zipper. At least that's my hope. If, if I work neatly, <laughs> it should be covered up. So that was my thinking behind that. It is probably the most comfortable, the most just fitting for this design. If, if I haven't shown you the design yet, I'll insert a picture right here. It's just a small little sketch that I did, but there you can see what I mean with the lapel being also a belt. So I want to have them crisscross in the two lapels. I want to have them crisscross here in the front and then go behind the back with like a long, long tie so that you have this kind of belt area and then you tie a bow tie in the, in the front somewhere and then it's hopefully gonna look very, very elegant. So that is my plan. So let's start with the fitting, if there even is um, 
a lot to fit but I want to give you kind of like a tutorial on fitting upper garments generally or at least you know what I am looking at and maybe what you can do too because you know bodies are different a mock-up is an absolute must and then the fitting is a result of that obviously so that you can get the perfect fit for your body type it's obviously not gonna fit everybody perfectly from the very beginning actually it's never probably gonna fit perfectly like whenever i make something with my sizes and stuff like that it still does not fit perfectly after the first mock-up like i always fit it please do not worry if you make a mock-up and it doesn't fit that's normal that's the process you have to go through. It is just what it is, but I can give you a few tips to make the process a bit more easy, I guess, or, you know, so that you have somewhat of a guide to get you through the fitting process. So usually, first thing, you fit on the person that the garment is for. So whenever you are making a garment for yourself, it is best to have another person helping you with the fitting. That's what we did in university. Always, we always had somebody who wore the garment closest to the sizes on the size chart. And like it was either a student or a model that we had come in. And then another student would fit the garment with you, usually the designer of the garment. And the first thing that I do, I put it on the person or in my case the dress form because the dress form is made after my measurements. I put it on, close it as however you close it in the end. So for me this is just I butt the two pieces here together, pin them in place and then see how everything works out or does not. So the first thing that I'm noticing right here is that this kind of sags down. This could also be because there is no arm in here. So let's actually look at this side where it does not sag as much right here. So it is probably because this fabric here needs, you know, something to pull at it, which is the arm usually. Whenever you move, you need to have some sort of more fabric down here in order to be able to move around. Whenever this is not big enough, not wide enough, you're not gonna be able to move your arm to call a taxi. That's what my teacher always said. Like you always have to be able to call a taxi with the garment. So try that. If it does not fit, you can't do, you know, that here, it kind of pulls on your fabric. There is not enough room under your arm to be able to move it up and down. So that's a first. I always make sure that is okay. And that is to me at least totally fine since this is a jacket. There is room for an undergarment, whatever that might be. So that is totally fine for me. Then the second thing I check whether this line here lays straight and I can see even though this right here is the exact same curve, like the front and the back lower parts, they all share this curve here on both pattern pieces. It kind of goes like either towards the front or the back. That is something that I want to make note of so that in my, like once I actually sew the piece, that I can stabilize this seam right here and also the pieces generally, it also happens right here so that this gets kind of puffed out like it's supposed to. Like this is supposed to have the shape and not flop down onto the body because then it just looks like folds. So that is something I make note of. Then another thing that I do is I check whether I like all of the darts, all of the dividing seams, the placements, and so on and so forth. I generally do that with the picture next to me of my design so I can check if it is, you know, the design that I'm doing or if it doesn't look like it so that I can change it and alter the lines to be exactly what I have designed. And the first thing that I am noticing is that the lower portion right here is too long. I feel like it is probably only that long. So I'll put a pin in and check what it looks like. And then also I feel like the height of my waistline doesn't perfectly correspond to the picture. So I kind of want to move that upwards a few centimeters, maybe to here. And 
then I go around the whole piece as straight as possible so that the line itself also looks good and then I don't need to do it over to this side because I'm just gonna mirror everything but as you can see the line itself is not parallel to the first waistline it kind of drops down the waistline I mean and now it is parallel front and back and the distance differs from here to here that is because the waistline as it was was not straight so that is another thing I correct basically so I generally want to shorten the length of the jacket and same thing to here I also want to go around and make it straight probably for the hem I want to have the back a teeny tiny bit longer then the next thing is the sleeve. So I'm looking at the sleeve where my arm is in. So that is the most accurate point to fit the sleeve. Obviously on yourself it's even better. But I'm checking the shape of the sleeve. It should generally always curve towards the front because if you look at your arm, obviously the elbow goes towards the front. So you want to mirror that for the sleeve as well. And then I also want to check if the sleeve curve here, so the sleeve head looks nice. I did kind of a mistake right here while sewing, but I can see right here that the sleeve curve is kind of off. So I want to correct that. And also up here, this looks kind of weird how the center back goes upwards. So I want to lower that as well. And then also another thing is I have a v-neck in my design which goes probably to down here, something like that. Probably go a little bit lower. And that is also something that I'll draw onto the piece. If I wouldn't do the lapel, I'd cut this out. But since I'm doing a lapel which interacts with this neckline, I'm just drawing it on. Speaking about the lapel, I'm doing the lapel while draping because I feel like that's the easiest method. So let's just get a little bit of fabric and I'm just gonna put it roughly in the line that I want to have the lapel sit in the end. So I'm just gonna put this right here. I have a clean surface to work with. The lapel is going to move under the boob. So I'm already trying to drape it and with that in mind. Now I can mark my shoulder right here. I want to have the crisscross somewhere here. And then it should go like over here. And then here is my arm. I want to go probably to up here. I feel like this droops too much. And then let's go to here. And then probably somewhere here. Or is that too high? That could work. So let's also draw on the fold line right here. And then we'll also need a back. And I'm gonna align it with the shoulder line of my front collar. And then from there on, I can just continue the line and just, you know, make any shape that I want. I could also like drop, droop it down or whatever, like it doesn't matter. Since I'm not gonna have the fold line right here, I'm just gonna have a seam basically. And then also I want to have this up here cover the neckline of my jacket, which this should do. And now what I want to do is take that off and then make two of them, put them on and see how it all looks together. Okay, I put the lapel collar onto the piece and now you can see what I meant with it also being a belt, obviously I'm not gonna add a rope like that to the final piece, but it's gonna be made out of the same material and probably like three centimeters wide. So it's gonna end up looking really neat and tidy, but that is what the lapel will end up looking like. I think that's all that I want to do. And here you can very nicely see how the natural waist 
like where the natural waste is and where my waste is that I put into the piece. It has to sit up here. Otherwise, the tie won't cover the seam and it's just looking odd. So I definitely need to change the seam and put it up there exactly where the tie sits. You can see it all around. It covers the blue everywhere. So I did that very well just by eye, which is coincidental, but that's really nice. But I guess with all of that done, I can, you know, change the pattern accordingly and do the thing. So I hope this was helpful as like a little fitting process. I almost never add it to my videos because it is more on the pattern development side and not the sewing side. So whenever you get the already fitted pattern, you kind of skip the design aspects. You just need to do the fitting to your body aspects. But I feel like it's still interesting and you guys always tell me to add the fitting process so i've i thought with a two-parter there is enough time to add it so i hope you liked it <laughs> okay i have everything cut out now it took a long time to actually cut everything out put interfacing on everything and the interfacing tape i'm gonna put an interfacing guide in my sewing instructions so that you can follow through as well but basically i just added it to like the necklines then you know the fold lines wherever they are there are some and then also to the curved seams here at the lower areas so that they have um, you know enough strength so let's actually get started with you know the general things such as the darts taking out my back piece and my front piece I want to close the darts I made sure to draw on the darts and also some stitching lines like here in the front where there will be the fold for the zipper and now I'm basically just gonna put right sides together put the stitching lines right on top of each other and so over top there, same to the back piece right here. I'm gonna iron the darts towards the side here in the back and I'll probably do the same for the front as well. Since the darts are pretty curved here in the front, I think I'm gonna use my tailor's ham for the boot part right here. So let's actually start like so, and then I'll put it like over top here. So I definitely want to do the zipper today. So what I'm going to do is put the lower front pieces together, these two right here. So I'm going to put the front dividing seam together by putting right sides of lower front and lower side front pieces together. Close it right here and same to the other side. The front dividing seam I'm gonna iron open so that it's, you know, the least bulk. All like so. And now I can put the two lower front pieces onto my other front pieces and the dart and the front dividing seam, they are matching up. So make sure to get a nice clean cross section right here. I'm gonna use some needles to help me and then the side seam and the front overlap for the zipper should match up as well. And with that sewn together, it looks like this. We can go ahead and iron the seam allowance open as well. I actually want to cut down the bulk of the seam allowance of the dart right here because this tends to be kind of in the way maybe something like that and now i can go ahead and iron the rest open like so and that's the front for now done we're going to continue with the zipper 
so for the zipper, actually, I am adding a zipper facing so that the zipper doesn't sit on your skin or in the undergarment. And for that, I went a little off the pattern that I give you because my fabric is really, really thick. Basically, what I did, I just cut out one half of this pattern piece out of my shell fabric and then out of a facing fabric that I will be using, which is similar in color, but like very thin. So I'm going to put them quickly together and have the same exact pattern piece right here and then we can continue as normal. Okay, so what I did here is basically just iron the piece in half. Obviously, since I am using two different fabrics, I have a seam there, so I made sure to iron the ditch of the seam towards the facing. Other than that, you just iron it in half so that you have the fold line as indicated in the pattern. And now we can go ahead and close the shorter sides on top and bottom. So I'm gonna put right sides together and just sew off the edge towards the fold line right here and the same to the other side. And with that done, I clip away the edges. For you, you just wanna you know, clip away that corner here and then we can turn this right sides out. I like to use an edge former to, you know, pop out that little edge here, just a tiny bit. And now I can go ahead and iron it again so that the ditch of the seam is only visible on the facing side. And I'll probably go around this at five millimeters and top stitch this. I'm also going to close this side or like base it together so that it's just gonna be nicer to work with once I actually put it on my jacket because my fabric is a tiny bit stretchy, both of them actually. So I don't want the fabrics to move around individually and do like weird things. So I'm just gonna base this together and add a decorative top stitch around the finished edges. Okay, I have my zipper facing and my zipper that fits the length of my facing. And then obviously I have my front piece, which is also the same length, plus seam allowances on top and bottom. I wanna be able to have, you know, like to put my hand in from the left side. That is why I have my left piece right here, where this piece gets attached to, so that I'm going to be able to put my hand in from the left side and that's gonna, you know, protect my skin or whatever I have underneath. So for that, I want to put my zipper onto this piece and it's gonna be this side of the zipper, which is then gonna get hidden by the front piece. So I can go ahead, since I have a centimeter of seam allowance right here, I can go ahead and just put the zipper onto my facing at one centimeter. I'm not gonna like sew at one centimeter, I'm gonna sew at like five millimeters or whatever, but I can perfectly align this and kind of hide away the top of the zipper here and pin it in place. And I go down all the way. This ends, the zipper ends with the facing and it's just perfectly aligned like so. I'm just gonna sew this onto the facing. Now, before I can put my front piece onto my zipper and, you know, facing combo, I have to finish these like teeny tiny edges up here, like a centimeter, basically, that's what that is. For that, I already put my stitching line onto the top and bottom right here. So I advise you to do the same. Just draw in, you know, the stitching lines. So measure in a centimeter from all edges and draw a line so that you have this crisscross and you know exactly until where you need to sew. And same to here. So this right here is my fold line. You can see all of that in your pattern piece and as well. And this section right here, this crisscross, needs to match up with that over there like this. And I can just pin this in place. That marks the crisscross so that it doesn't like shift too much under the sewing machine. My fabric is really thick. So this is kind of difficult to get it perfectly aligned. I also struggled a lot with aligning the lower and upper portion of the front. And now I'm gonna stitch like this teeny tiny edge right here, the centimeter towards the fold line on top and on bottom. And now I can cut towards that edge, I already marked it with my pen. 
so that I am able to turn this whole thing right sides out. I'm also going to cut down the seam allowance generally so that once this gets turned, you have like this kind of edge, that seam allowance, which will get, you know, sewn together with the front facing. So that's going to be gone as well. But that kind of edge is what you should have right now. It look, kind of looks like a lapel. <laughs> so I'm going to repeat the same for the bottom, cut towards that corner there and cut down the seam allowance to be able to turn this right sides out nicely. And now I have like these two cute edges, which I then also can iron at the fold line. And if you put the interfacing correctly, it should more or less already fold where you want it to fold because of the interfacing tape, kind of a small hack. So basically there is the fold line right here and then the interfacing starts. So the interfacing kind of prevents the front piece from folding, you know, further in than you want it to. That's why you put the interfacing tape at exactly next to the fold line. And you just want to make sure that the front here is very straight. And now this piece gets put right on top here. The waistline is marked with this notch. I'm just putting it together with that one layer that we just folded and ironed. And it all should match up perfectly with each other. So I want to sew off of the facing right here, like right at that corner where I clipped into the seam allowance. That's exactly the spot I want to sew off of my zipper facing. So I'm gonna try to somehow mark it because there is obviously also the metal for the zipper. And the same thing to up here. I want to sew exactly until this point right here where we clipped into the seam allowance, something like that. Now I need to like super carefully put these two layers together and then we can treat all of this as like one kind of layer. So the facing gets attached to this whole thing, you know, like this is now all one line with the neckline. It's all one thing. So let's put this on. So now, as you can see, or not able to see, we hid the teeth behind that fold line right here. So that was the goal all along, to kind of hide the teeth behind that cute little fold line, which we did with like finishing the edges, so that once this is like worn, you're not able to like kind of see the teeth right here. So that was the goal. I kind of think it went very well. So let's just iron this. So like this, and I think that looks very nice. So I'm gonna try to put like the other side in here now and see how it looks with the zip pulled up. And I think this is gonna work really well. So there is gonna be a little bit of tension on this once we wear it. I have to also fix that in place once, you know, the facing and the lining and everything is in. I have to sew this down, either that or I can hand stitch this in place. Probably I'm gonna sew it down because I also found that top stitches can be kind of hidden with this type of fabric. I don't know if you noticed this, but next to my top stitches here is actually another row of top stitches, which I did and I didn't really like it, but <laughs> rather than, you know, undoing the thing, which is super like, uh, because of the fabric, I kind of, you know, used my seam ripper and kind of went over the seam. And now you can't really see it anymore on this side. You can obviously still see it on the facing, but like, really really nice so that's what i did there and probably i'm gonna do the same thing for that top stitching row here after i'm completely done with the jacket so that it's also invisible let's add this piece to the other side which is a little a little easier because we don't have the facing so you want to do exactly the same here with that fold you also want to finish the edges 
same as we did for the other side and then we can put the zipper on. So let's quickly do the finishing here. Same thing here, we want to iron the fold line in right next to the interfacing tape as we prepared. And now I want to pin the zipper onto this piece and check with the other side if you know it lines up and everything looks good and so on. So I'm gonna put this next to here and also actually zip it up just to see if it all like looks nice. And then there are like three different spots that need to match up as you can see already. Obviously here the waistline needs to match up, the top and then the bottom, which they all seem to really nicely. I really do want to add like a pin because the top and bottom, you know, it's wherever the zipper stops. So that's pretty easy to actually get right. But the waistline could be anywhere. So I'd rather have a pin in, which then tells me to sew it right here. And now we can go ahead and sew this in place as well. And let's iron this again. So there is no need to actually sew it also at one centimeter. Five millimeters is totally fine because it will get fixed in place properly with the top stitches and there is no need for anything else. And now once we put everything together, hopefully everything worked out and it fits together perfectly. And it looks about right. You can see the cross section looks really, really neat. Down here, it also looks like it matches up. Same to up here. So super happy with that. And as you can see, you can't really see it. Like obviously you can still see it once you pull it apart. But as I said, there will be top stitches here, which will hold this in place and they are not gonna see the teeth of the zipper at all. So that's really, really nice. And that's the front piece done. And that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed this, you know, introduction into draping and then also starting uh, this jacket, the sewing process of this jacket. Please make sure to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you'll get notified when I post next, which will be the second part to this jacket where we hopefully also finish this jacket. Also make sure to leave a like and a comment to boost the algorithm so that more people can watch and maybe enjoy my content. That would be amazing. Thank you so much. In the meantime, if you haven't already, go check out my social media for short form content. Links to all of that are in the description down below and hit follow there so you'll never miss any tips and tricks that I put up. The videos I put out there are actually most always connected to the projects that I'm doing. I'm doing like tips and tricks. So if you're interested in that, make sure to check that out as well. The most direct way to support me and keep videos just like this one coming is to head over to my Etsy store. Link to that is also in the description down below. There is actually a Christmas sale going on at the moment so if you haven't already and you maybe want to gift something to a loved one or another sewing enthusiast you can check out my store where you find all my you know downloadable digital content all of my pdf files patterns everything that i make so if you haven't found the perfect christmas gift on short notice very nice because it is a downloadable content which you will get immediately after purchasing so check that out in the description down below a special thank you to my channel members you can get exclusive benefits through the link in the description down below so thank you so much for watching and i'm gonna see you next week with the second part of this jacket bye guys